Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today, my sweet friend Annie of Indiana Jones and I, that's me, hi, have decided to try our hands at some industrial steampunk, Victorian, shabby chic fun. We wanted to mix it up a bit from the usual, so here we go. I'm making this cool industrial gadget lamp. Let's get into it. I wanted to use all items I had on hand, so I dug through my stash and I found this box, which I bought at AC Moore many years ago. I cut this wood slat, which I believe is from Michael's, to fit the opening of my box. So I turned the box so that the opening is in the back, and I drilled three holes using the appropriate size paddle bit. I didn't realize the camera was off while I was doing this, but this is what a paddle bit looks like, and it's just like using a regular drill bit. And then I sanded the holes with a nail file. The larger hole is where I'll fix my working light bulb, and the other two will get these copper fittings. My husband found these amongst our various bits and bobs of hardware, so I snagged them. They'll just rest here in the holes here on the top, but I'll set them aside for now. This side will be the front. There's some glue left from a tag, looks like, so I'll sand that off with my hand sander in a moment, but let me show you the other doodads I'll be using on the front here. This is a bottle cap from an iced tea bottle. This will be my main gauge. And I have these strike plates from some door hardware, which will be gauge windows. They'll go right about here. I'll sand away the glue real quick. Love this little sander, so handy. And this sweet bit here too. And there we go. I want a few copper stripes on the front, so I'll dab some full guard metallic copper here on the front. I started painting the top with black when I remembered that I wanted stripes. Thankfully, I remembered before I got much further. I wasn't sure if this copper would be translucent and need several coats, so I'm dabbing it on with a cosmetic sponge, but it's actually very opaque, so I switched to wiping it on. I used some vinyl strips to cover the copper to make my stripes. You can use painter's tape too for this. I always keep some vinyl strips ready to go for this purpose. I cut them with my silhouette. I'm using a strip of the vinyl as a spacer, so I'll remove that. I dab some Mod Podge in between the tape. Now this is to keep the paint from seeping under the tape, but I must not have had the tape down well enough because, as you'll see later, there was some bleeding. No biggie though. So I paint the entire box black, including the wood slat. I went ahead and removed the vinyl for the stripes, and once everything is painted, I'll spray both pieces with clear matte sealer. Now I'll work on my embellishments. I'll use two of these Dollar Tree mini bottles. What I'm going to do is lightly spray the lids from the bottles and the lid from my iced tea container with this Frustoleum Metallic Sienna Mist. I'm using the mini bottles as faux light bulbs. They'll screw right into the copper fittings, which was a very happy coincidence. And light bulbs have filaments, which I'll make from 19 gauge craft wire. This is what it all looked like. So to make it, I cut about six inches, I guess, of wire. And I just wrap it around a skewer a couple times, I think three times, to give it a curl. And I'm leaving a couple inches of wire on both sides as kind of like little legs. I'll 
I'll dry brush some of the copper onto my hardware embellishments, including the filaments. I want these to stand out against the black box. The copper will be a nice contrast. I think it's hard to see the copper going onto the hardware here, but when it's up against the black box, it stands out a lot more. You'll see. I noticed a bit of oxidation on the copper fittings, and I'm digging how that looks, so I'll dry brush all the bits and bobs with some Americana sea glass to mimic that effect. I'm trying to catch the edges with that patina. Sometimes I tend to be a little heavy-handed, but just do it until it looks good to your eye. And I'm just doing a wee touch on the hinge. The mini bottle lids will be dials on the front of the box, so they'll get some patina too. As well as this piece, which is part of the light fixture, I'm just adding until I'm happy. This is like a washer thing that holds the bulb in place. And of course, I can't forget the iced tea lid. I actually saw somebody on Pinterest use a lid like this for a steampunk gauge, and I thought, I have one of those. So that worked out. I feel like the copper striping needs to be toned down, which I'll do with cosmetic sponge and black ink. Again, until it pleases my eye. I printed this gauge I found on Pinterest onto some cardstock and cut it out. I'll Mod Podge it onto the iced tea lid. I apply a healthy coat to the lid and to the cardstock, and I'll pop it in place, give it a roll with my brayer, and give it a top coat. I thought this gauge was really cool. It's got a very realistic appearance to it. I'll pop the filaments into the wee bottles. They just slide right in. I'll screw on the fitting. One fits perfectly. The other, I had to add a drop of hot glue to the bottom before screwing it to the fitting. Hmm, that looks pretty convincing. From a piece of scrapbook paper, I cut a strip that looks like a tape measure. It's perfect for this project. I center my number in the opening of the striker, and I'll mark the edge with a pencil and cut it out. I attach it to the back of the striker with E6000 and hot glue. I'll use the hinge to attach the wood slat to the side. This is paper thin wood, so a screw wouldn't really work. So I'll use the E6000 to affix the hinge to both the slat and the box. And fingers crossed, that it sticks. I'll mark the hinge holes on both the box and the slat so I know where they go once I apply the glue. And we'll see if it holds. I should mention too that I make sure that the hinge pin is kind of hanging over the edge. That way the hinge will be operational. I attach the knobs and the gauges to the front, again, just using hot glue and E6000 and eyeballing it. I don't know about you, but I have a much better chance of getting things centered if I don't measure and just do it by sight.
Yeah, I'm starting to feel it. It's starting to look like something now. And I'll add my gauge displays. Also with E6000 and hot glue. Just pressing it and holding it in place for a wee bit and I'm cleaning up some extra glue with that secure. Check this out. Found these, I don't know what you call them, bolt caps, I don't know, some such. Anyway, they fit perfectly into the bottom holes on the strike plates, so I dry brush them to match the other hardware. I think they look like switches. So, adding a blob of E6000 right into the opening, and I just push them right in there. I decided to add this knob to the top. I'll drill a hole between the two other holes, twist it into place, and I did add some hot glue around the bottom to keep it nice and secure. I have this pendant lamp cord, which I bought at Ikea, again, years ago. I'm going to see if it'll fit through the rear opening, but if not, I'll be able to use that side flap. Yeah, gonna have to use the flap. And there we go. I'll just push that up in there, like so. I'll screw on that washer type piece, which holds the lamp in place. I did, by the way, have to screw the hinge to the top. That popped off, but the E6000 held on the slat, so we're good there. I dropped in the faux bulbs into the holes, and I'll screw in my Edison bulb. Boom, lights are on. So that's my take on an industrial steampunk gadget lamp. I really enjoyed making this. Bonus that it was all stuff I had around the house. I really like it. I hope you like it too. I want to thank Annie for joining me on this left of center collaboration. Annie and I both love quirky projects. We were itching to collab on something a bit different. So this is it. She's so amazing and creative and such a sweet soul. Please be sure to check out her gorgeous projects. I've linked her channel below. Show her some love. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.